Hello, everyone, and welcome to Girl We Have to Talk podcast, a bi weekly friendship exploration. Okay, like, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at myself. I'm usually not that nerdy, but I can't think of a better way to describe this podcast. It is just a bi weekly time for me to talk about um, being a woman, things that happen to people. Um, when they are women, I don't even know, like when you are a woman, these things may happen to you. Um, that is what this podcast is about. And usually it'll be me and a female friend, but I do plan on maybe inviting some male friends and maybe even my husband on this podcast as well, um, to talk about those things. So I am Iris, I am your host, and I will be coming to you every other Sunday from Chicago, where maybe eventually it will be summer because it is the end of May right now and I am sitting in front of a lit fireplace uh, with a glass of wine watching the snow fall out of uh, the sky. It has been snowing probably for maybe five or six hours. Um, so yeah, that is my deal and that is what I am up to, but, uh, usually you will be coming uh, to this podcast. I hope that you will come back if you are not too freaked out by my energy. Um, you'll be coming back and looking forward to hearing about different topics related to women and different topics related to friendship. Um, most of the time I will have a friend with me that I'll be interviewing with, um, and they will usually tell me the topic that they want to talk about and we will jump right in. This week though, because it is the first episode, I wanted to give you guys a chance to get to know me. Um, so join me for this 20 minute or so conversation with myself about, um, friendship and a really interesting topic, friendship ghosting, which I am not entirely sure is talked about enough because I think it happens a lot and I am a guilty partner um, in the ghosting. I have ghosted quite a few friends. So I'm going to talk about the times when I think that it has been for the best and sometimes where I think that it could be for the worst. And then I'd love it if anybody is listening to this and wants to get back to me, um, reach out to me via Instagram, which is Girl We Have to Talk podcast. Um, you can send me a direct message or you can even comment on some of my posts and let me know, have you ever ghosted a friend and if you have ghosted a friend and you've regretted it what have you done Um, so join me for that conversation and maybe more depending on how the the time goes um, on girl we have to talk podcast thanks okay so let's start off by talking a little bit about me so my name is iris i live in chicago I am 30 years old. I work in human resources, so I also have a podcast regarding career advice um, called Prepped Podcast. That is P-R-E-P-P-E-D Podcast. You can also connect with us on Instagram and Facebook for that podcast, and that is a career advice podcast. So if any of the ladies or gentlemen out there are kind of in a transition point in their career, it is a very interesting podcast. It's a lot of fun. Um, It is something that I hope with one of my closest friends, Nina, who will be a guest on this podcast eventually. Um, And it's great. We are both in HR. We both are on the talent side of HR. So we provide lots of hot takes and different um, tips and tools that you can kind of use to get through um, in your career. And I say get through because most people feel that way, that they're getting through, not necessarily thriving. So hopefully if you listen to the podcast, you'll get some advice that'll help you get through. And if not, maybe even better yet, thrive within your career. But no promises because sometimes we all just have a job while we work on our passion. Um, And I will say that I am probably in a similar situation. I love my job, but I really, really am so entrepreneurial in spirit. Um, So that is actually why I started this podcast. I need an outlet for myself um, because I don't consider myself a creative, but I just have so much passion and so much energy. And um, one of the things that I've always been very good at um, is listening. So I wanted to start a podcast where I would get a chance to connect with my friends and kind of play the role of 
Dr. Phil uh, or Oprah and just kind of listen to their problems. I probably will not be giving advice. It'll be more so like an open forum conversation where we have some dialogue about different things that are going on in their life or different topics that they feel are important and just sharing our takes on it and hopefully hearing back from you about how you feel about those situations as well. Um, So that's kind of how this podcast came to be. And um, I'm also just very passionate about female friendship. I have had the best friends um, that a girl could ask for throughout my life. So along these 30 short years, I feel very young in my life, um, I've had some really great friendships. And I think that I have maintained a lot of really great friendships um, with women and men who I've met at various stages throughout my life. Um, So I feel very strongly about friendship. I think it is one of life's greatest pleasures is hanging out with a friend. And so I hope that eventually this podcast will be to my listeners, those who come back, um, a really great joy and something that you kind of feel like is time where you get to connect with me, even though we probably may not ever meet in person. A time when you can connect with somebody who you feel like is a friend and you feel like has a connection with you um, because I know that that's something that I am always um, really excited to do and as we move forward in our life I think unfortunately we get to do less of. Um, Usually by the time we've hit our 30s we're so busy working, Um, maybe we're buying a house, um, a condo, Uh, maybe we're having some kids, sometimes people move. I know Chicago is a city where we get a lot of people who kind of come and go here So I've definitely lost some friends that way too, um, where they've kind of moved out of state. And sometimes we stick really close. And I have some great friends who do not live in Chicago anymore, who hopefully I'll get on the podcast too. I actually know for sure that I will. Um, But we've stuck it out and just been like really close, even maybe gotten closer through the distance. And now I have a really fun, oftentimes warmer place to visit. Um, But, you know, sometimes people move and you don't stay close. So... I think that that happens to a lot of people throughout their lives. Their friendships kind of ebb and flow. And um, I think that having a podcast to maintain, like be able to stay in touch with some of my friends, maybe make some new friends is a great outlet for me um, and something that I'm really excited about doing. Um, So that's kind of how this podcast came to be. And today I am going to be by myself. Usually this podcast will be me interviewing a friend or kind of having a conversation with them. Um, But today, because it is my first episode, I grabbed a glass of wine and I decided to just sit down and talk to myself and really talk to you guys um, and just allow you guys a chance to get to know me. And one of the things that I feel like is an interesting topic and something that we don't talk about a lot i don't i've never really heard anyone talk about this and maybe i'm alone and if i am great please tell me your stories um because i kind of feel like i'm the only person who thinks about this is the the issue of friendship ghosting so we all know what ghosting is i think there was an article recently um definitely in buzzfeed but i think it's even gotten larger to maybe even being in like the the new york post or the new york times Um, It is a thing. So typically this happens in romantic relationships, especially in the online dating culture that we have stumbled upon. Um, A lot of the times somebody will, two people will be dating. And I mean, it could be, I I, I guess I could say that I don't think that you could ghost somebody after one date, right? Because ghosting implies that there's like some kind of a relationship, a connection there. Um, But usually people are getting ghosted after they felt that things were going really well. I've heard it happen as soon as like three dates. And this is typically after the party who goes to said things like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. Um, I really think that this is going someplace. And they kind of like love bomb the person and then they just disappear. And it's not, I haven't heard, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you have some stories where it's been like, flat out ignoring it's become like a passive aggressive it's like it's not necessarily that i am like a completely disappearing person but it's like a ghost i guess where i I guess maybe we see ghosts right or ha hopefully you don't see ghosts but if the theory of ghosts is that we kind of see you or at least we kind of like know you're there there's like some kind of a spirit or presence around 
And I think that's kind of related to the ghosting too, where it's like usually the person doesn't just flat out disappear. It's kind of just this weird thing where you're like really in touch at first and then all of a sudden the person has just started to evaporate. You see less and less of them and and then eventually they're just gone. Um, and then I also have a lot of friends where they get ghosted and I, this has not happened to me. I've been with my husband for a very long time. So if I'm ever single again, the online dating world will be completely new to me. I mean, not really completely new. I mean, my husband and I have been together in a relationship for a really long time, but we've definitely had some breaks. So I've contemplated the match.coms of the world, but I haven't had firsthand experience with a relationship ghost, but I've heard about it from every single one of my friends who's been dating online. Um, and it will just be this person just kind of evaporates from their life and then sometimes they pop back up um, and they're like, hey, who is this? And I am the friend who is like very anti-ghosting, um, which I feel like is kind of saying the most obvious thing to say. It's like, I am anti-ghosting. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's some people out there who are like, no, I'm super pro-ghosting. Ghost the fuck out of somebody. But I am anti-ghosting. I am like if one of my friends tells me that they are being ghosted or they're like oh my gosh iris i really liked him he said that he was really interested in me and he came on really hot and heavy and we were talking every day and we were making plans for the summer um and now he's just disappeared and i my reaction is so like rah-rah sisterhood that i'm like fuck him fuck the horse he rode in on do you want to go and egg his house right now? And of course, like my friends are like, no, I don't want to go egg his house. And I'm like, okay, well, just so you know, I'm like there for you. If you if we need to go fuck some shit up, you just let me know. I am that friend. I will be there for you to do that. Um, luckily, my friends are normal. I don't know what I would do if I had really crazy friends who were like, yes, girl, let's go do that. I'd probably be like, oh, shit, I was just kidding. Let's not commit a felony. But usually I will just kind of like be the one to be like all about no fuck that guy sisterhood like do not fret over this this is bullshit let's go get drinks um and i'm just really like totally against it and even on the rush like the other side of that if i have a friend who's like i am so sick of this guy or this girl um because i do some guy friends too and i'm sick of this person like i don't want to date them anymore but like they're so dramatic because I feel like that's always the case that that's the thing that is said always male or female it's you want to ghost the person because they're quote unquote dramatic meaning they have feelings and would like you to communicate with them but yeah this person's so dramatic and I kind of just like I don't even want to get into it I'm just going to kind of just stop talking to them and I'm always like please don't do that do it like you would hate it if somebody did that to you you would think it was the most fucked up thing ever So what do you do when a time comes in a friendship where you feel like it's no longer no longer working out for you? I think that it's easy for me to say that I think ghosting in relationships is bad because I feel that we're trained early on in life that there's a right way and a wrong way to treat people who you're in a romantic relationship with. Um, and that, you know, sometimes relationships require work, they require communication, um, and if it's not working, you need to also be mature enough and adult enough to, when you're in a relationship with that person, tell them. Um, I think we've all seen breakup movies and movies about uh, relationships ending after a long period of time. And, you know, how sometimes people come out of it and they're amicable um, and how sometimes people come out and they don't talk and how you're it's OK to be devastated. It's it's fine. You can be vulnerable in this situation. But I don't think that there are enough conversations and things to be sought out in regards to ending friendships. So I think that oftentimes people stay in toxic friendships or they do what I often do and that's ghost in a friendship. Um, and I think that I've ghosted friends for a variety of reasons and I've never felt bad about it. There's usually been something where this person has become an energy vampire. Maybe they're extremely negative. Um, maybe they're toxic to be around. Um, and, you know, maybe they're not even putting as much effort into the friendship as I would like. And I'm kind of like, this is just not worth my time. And I slowly back away and make myself unavailable to that situation. Um, and it's always worked out because usually these friends, are, even if we have multiple friends in common, it's usually pretty simple to back away because maybe 
I'm usually not alone. These people are usually want someone that other people have also decided is, you know, behaving badly. And typically, like, I'm not the person, the only one in the group to say, okay, well, listen, I'm taking a stand and not talking to this person anymore. It is usually that this person is kind of just spiraled to a point where most people around them have decided to back away slowly. <laughs> um, and I think we've all known somebody like that or a few people like that. Um, so recently, though, the reason this topic came to mind as something that was interesting for our first podcast is, A, just how differently I feel about ghosting in relationships, which I'm just like, oh my gosh, you should never do that. And then ghosting in friendships, which I'm like, well, you know, sometimes it needs to be done. And the question I have is, does it really need to be done? Um, we put a lot of emphasis on our romantic relationships, especially women, um, and knowing that things are not always going to be easy, that you have to work for these things. But I don't know if we put that same amount of effort into our female relationships or our, our friendships um, with people. We are, and especially myself, I think that I can be very disposable with friends. I do have some really long-term friends and there kind of is this line, it's an invisible line, and I'm not really sure where this line comes, where if we've been friends for a certain amount of time, and I've known you, and we've had some really great times, I'm I'm really unwilling to end the friendship, but there does become this tether. Um, I've had friends for 15 years, for 20 years, um, people who I've been friends f with for 10 years, 12 years, and they move away, or we get into arguments, or maybe we don't talk for days or weeks or months, but I never cut the tether with them. I never say, okay, well, we're definitely not friends. There's nothing, there's not a little switch over in my mind that says that this friendship is over. So there's some people where those friendships have become permanent. Like I, I see them as permanent friends. Um, but until then, I think that there's this area, this gray area where I would be willing to let the friendship end. Um, and again, I've done this before. And for the most part, there has been really no second guessing it or no backtracking thoughts about it. Um, I have had one friendship actual breakup um, with somebody who I was very good friends with for five years and we basically were just like, listen, we're, we're like oil and water. This is not going to work out. Um, we basically outgrew each other and we did have like a, there was a formal conversation about the fact that we weren't going to be friends anymore, which sounds so dramatic, but it was nice because there was closure. It was like, okay, well, this, we both agree this is not working. We have tried. We have even like had conversations about the fact that we disagree about things. Um, but you know, ultimately this is not working. We both know why this is not working. We are just going to remove each other from, remove ourselves from each other's lives. Um, and that honestly wasn't hard. It was like one of those situations where I just felt it in my soul where I was like, this is done. Like we are just not getting along. We have outgrown each other. Um, there's a song, I think it's by Miguel where it's like, we don't, we don't like the same, we don't do the same drugs anymore, which is a metaphor for like, we just don't like the same things anymore. Um, and so I think we got to that place where it was just like, this is not a fun friendship for anyone. Um, let's end it. And then, you know, there's also the friends where I've been like, this is super toxic and I'm not going to feel bad ending it. Um, but the reason that this is this topic, the friendship ghosting, I thought was at the top of my mind for this first episode is because I have a recent friendship ending, um, which I think is the first time that I have been maybe I was ghosted. I'm not sure. So I'll talk it through with you. And I'd love it if anybody's listening to kind of give me your ideas on what you think has happened here. Um, so I had a friend for three or four years and we were very close. Um, it's funny because it was kind of like a dating relationship where we actually met online um, and we clicked right away. We had so many things in common. Uh, we had a lot of fun together and it was a really great friendship for I would say the first two years um, and then we moved in together and then things kind of shifted. Um, there are a lot of things I, and I can't speak for her because I'm not sure, but there are a lot of things that she would do that would make me uncomfortable. Um, I think that she was 
you know, unaware of when she was behaving badly, kind of in a way that was embarrassing. Sometimes she would treat restaurant staff rudely. Um, She had a very way of being like very terse. Um, Sometimes if she got drunk, she could be a little bit mean. I remember one night we were at a wine bar with two other girlfriends and she got into a conversation with this woman about what, like how important her relationship with her father should be. And this woman was basically almost in tears saying, listen, my father was horrible to me and I I don't appreciate him. And this girlfriend just kept saying, well, you have to, you have to. And it was, it was so uncomfortable. Um, and, and I am, um, in, life a rescuer and so I hate levels of uncomfort it makes me so uncomfortable to be around people who are doing things that are like rude or mean I feel like it's a representation upon me and I kind of just want to like back away slowly or like get the conversation to stop um and she was kind of exhibiting those behaviors she became kind of bossy um and very just I don't know if she realized it, but a lot of the times her behavior came across as condescending or um, a little too blunt. And I myself have been called blunt. I don't think that I am. When I talk to people around me who are my good friends, I'm like, am I blunt? And they're like, no, but you are very direct. But you try to soften the blow with some like nice words or, you know, make it conversational. I mean, so the, 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 truth maybe hits you in a softer place and she wasn't really doing that which is kind of not her prerogative to do like some people just are like I'm not going to soften the blow I can just be completely upfront and honest with you and say it how it is but sometimes that was a little bit rough um I also eventually felt like I was putting more into the friendship than she was. Like I was, I feel like I'm super supportive and very nice. And I felt like from her, it was mostly just, you know, accusations and kind of like these really like pointed conversations where like I I felt very attacked most of the time. Um, And I didn't understand where the behavior was coming from. And I had, you know, really valued the friendship and I tried to speak to this person about it. And she was like, you know, you know, no, nothing's going on. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. And just like a complete not understanding or not willing to talk about like why there was a shift in her behavior, or why she was being nasty. Now, there's probably I think that I have like a little bomb inside of me too I'm sure that there were times where she had already just pissed me off so maybe I might have said some things that were not necessarily as nice either um but I did try to talk to her about those things and apologize and she was like well no I never even noticed it wasn't even a big deal so there was a lot of passiveness on her part too um and then there just came a place in our friendship where I she moved out and I was like I think this is a good time for me to back away um I did not have the intention, because I have done it before, to ghost this friend, um, but I did have the intention of not being as close with her. Um, And the reason I wasn't going to ghost this friend is because we still have mutual friends. Some of them we've met together, and then some are friends that I've introduced her to who I'm actually still really close with. Um, And, you know, I don't ask these other friends if they're still in touch with her, but there's one friend in particular who um, I know is still good friends with her. I think really good friends perhaps even like better friends than than she and I are um and it's a friendship where I like really like this additional this new girl Uh, she's not really new but like this new piece to the friendship I really like her um I think we have like a lot of things in common and I really enjoy spending time with her but there's this piece of me that you know is resistant to hanging out because of this awkwardness between me and this other person who I used to be friends with. Um, There is just something about being friends with people who are still connected with those who you are not friends with that can kind of make things awkward. And so for that reason, I didn't want to ghost this person. However, um, and so when I say ghost, that usually means that I'll completely stop talking to you and I usually will delete you off of social media. In this case, I didn't completely stop talking to her. I did stop trying to invite her to do things and like didn't really want to hang out. Um, 
but I didn't delete her on social media. I left that as a door that was open. But a few months after she moved out, I noticed that she had deleted me on social media, which kind of, as a millennial, closes a door. It's like, okay, well, this is over. Um, And ever since then, it has been really awkward for me with my other friendships, with people that are close to her, because I've never been in the situation where you are having to still have a slight connection to this person um, and it just makes it awkward and so that is kind of why I didn't want to fully ghost this person but then I think instead I was ghosted and so now I'm kind of on this receiving end of it um, and it makes it awkward Um, with my other friendships um, that I have with that I share with this person Um, and it makes you feel a little bit sad because there's some times where maybe like recently this other friend had a birthday and I did get to hang out with this other friend for her birthday um, which was great but I did know like we had been talking and this friend that was going through some things and I was like this is a big birthday for you you have to celebrate it you have to go out and you have to party and you have to have a really good time and you know let me know what you decide to do because I'd like to go um and either, I, I can't be sure why this happened, but I know that she ended up going out because of social media, um, and she like looked like she had a really great time, and I would have loved to have come, but it looks like the person who I am no longer friends with was there, um, and I'm not sure if it was an oversight that I wasn't invited, or if it was because these two things now need to be separate, but it really left me in a place where I was like, this is upsetting. It's it's sad. It's nobody's fault, but it's kind of why I wanted to leave the door open so that if we did have to go to things in public, it wouldn't be so final. It was kind of like, hey, we're not best friends anymore, but we're also like not enemies. We're just people who know each other. Um, And instead now I feel like it has become like almost as if we're enemies, as if we could not be in the same place with each other. Um, And it makes it difficult to have mutual friends in that situation and so now I guess I feel like that I'm on the reverse end of a ghosting situation and I think to myself about other people who I've ghosted in the past and who I've really like maybe not had a full conversation with and a mature approach to ending the friendship um and like how maybe they felt if we did, you know, maybe have mutual friends, maybe they felt like they lost friends because we weren't friends anymore. Um, And so I'm just curious about if other people have been in this situation. Have you ghosted a friend? Um, Have you lost a friend? And then what do you do if there's these relationships that are still tethering you to this person when things feel so awkward? Um, I'd love to know your thoughts about this. Um, I'd love to know any advice on how to approach these things. Um, going forward into new relationships and I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this type of dialogue and this conversation Um, as I said going forward I will have a friend on the podcast Um, my next guest will be my friend Nina who I do career advice with and so that'll be really fun I don't think we'll talk about career advice Um, if you want that you can listen to our other podcast but um, we'll talk about her life she has five kids a house in the middle of the woods I'm not kidding Um, and a husband and then also a full-time job Um, so she is interesting. She has a lot going on. She has some solid advice. Um, and so we'll talk about all those things. And then I'll also run this friendship ghosting situation past her to see what her thoughts are. Um, and maybe if I have any comments, um, from you guys, we can kind of discuss those as well. And I really hope that you all are having an amazing Sunday or whatever day it is when you find yourself listening to this and hopefully we'll be talking soon. (laughs) 